each of those is kind of like a house and you'll typically have, you know, uh, maybe a male and female mating pair um, or, you know, multiples, crabs or ophiroids so that when they reproduce, they don't have to worry about, um, you know, their gametes going off into the water column and never fertilizing. You know, there's a greater chance of success. And then the larvae, when they're fertilized in the water column, they have some, uh, you know, probably some sort of cue that they look for, um, environmental cue, chemical cue, uh, that attracts them back to either their home coral or maybe a, a nearby one. Wow, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> well, they said it wasn't working at all, right? Yeah. I can turn it on, but they're not getting any signal. No signal. Very nice coral community here. I like these big boulders. Nice stable substrate. Probably some nice current ex uh, currents accelerated over the rocky outcrop here. Yeah, there's definitely some cool stuff living here. Surprised there there isn't that much of a diversity of squat lobsters on some of these other corals, which I would expect to see. Um, you know, usually Chrysogorgia colonies, you know, the bottle brush types, they have a diversity of squat lobsters living on the inside. Uh, but not a lot of these other other colonies do. Oh, this one's quite large here. Whoa. <laughs> it's going. Hello. Wow. Humongous. <laughs> yeah. That is huge. Big. Like two of them are huge right wow. there. Wow. That's incredible. That was a cool little spot. It's a very prominent rock. I'm going back down. Ritigorgia magnus borellus, another 
Chrysogorgia, Chrysogorgia colonies throughout the dive so far. It's been a really good diversity. Um, we've seen both Ritogorgia, two species actually. Um, we can tell them apart based on how the morphology of the helix is, is constructed in the colony. Um, as well, we saw a, and sampled a really interesting colony of Rodan Ritogorgia, uh, which is likely a new species undergoing description. Uh, that was in the 11 o'clock hour. It's kind of a neat observation. So this morning I was reading this article on the Japanese lunar lander, which was exploring a crater on the moon. And they saw off on the horizon this funny like cube shape that they're calling like a cube hut huh. on the moon. It's off on the horizon. It's like, I think it's like 80 or 100 meters away. They're like, oh my god, wow. Like, we need to go check this out. It's a really bizarre shape. Okay, that'll take two to three lunar days. You know how long that is? Two to three months. No way. To get there no. to see the thing. Wow. And it's 80 meters away? I think it's real. It's really not that far. Wow. <laughs> That's some great perspective. So if you ever feel like it's just taking us a while to get there, we could be on the moon. You're saying the horizon is 80 meters away? Down in a crater. Oh. It's like up the, I think the lunar lander is like down a little bit. And they were looking up on the edge of the rim of the crater. Or they're something. calling it a hut though? <laughs> they're calling it a hut or a cabin. There's no evidence that it's a hut or a cabin. <laughs> it's also on the dark side of the moon. Um, huh. Anyways, so I just thought that was a cool perspective. I don't know too much more technical details about it, but like it's a neat perspective on remotely operated vehicles. Do you know what kind of imaging they're using to see <laughs> on the dark side? Uh, no, I would imagine just good low light sensors. Huh. I think I've seen this movie before, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do I feel like. <laughs> see what's in there. <laughs> Don't go. Like, you're supposed to tell the lunar lander not to do it. The lunar lander is going to uh, suggest that you split up. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go this way, I'll go that way. <laughs> There's some more pretty big coral fans up here. can't imagine the suspense of waiting two to three months to find out what that like cabin on the horizon looks like I inside. <laughs> Watch, it's probably some sort of human trash. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Messed up the moon. <laughs> Shipping container. <laughs> Well, given the amount of trash we've seen on this seamount so far, um, surprising. We saw a tire earlier. We saw a tire? A tire. Really? Yeah. Goodness. <clears throat> and tons Wait. of cans and... On and this metal. watch? No. No, on the last uh, watch, I okay. sat in briefly. Yeah, there was a tire sitting on the seafloor. No kidding. I had been feeling like on these islands, we hadn't been seeing a lot of garbage, like especially compared to like Johnston Atoll or something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to imagine there's a, a fair amount of ship traffic across these seamounts because it's directly east-west into Honolulu. But I, I'm surprised wow. as well, you know, it's pretty remote and well, relatively remote. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you throw trash off, you, it has to kind of land on a certain part of the seamount. It's kind of like so hitting a bullseye. Right. Massive, massive bands. Yeah, that's huge. Cool. Okay, onward. So, um, why don't we plan to stop the ship on the target 
so we can look around for a solid rock. Unless we don't, unless we're starting to see that there's really nothing. Um, but I think there's a lot of stuff here that we could potentially grab. Are you in uh, terms of rocks? Um, yeah, we're yeah. almost to the end of a move. Uh, so if we see something now, could be a good time. Otherwise, it's another hundred meters to the target. Yeah. Well, let's put in one more hundred meters and then see how it goes. Roger. We also don't have a lot of layback because we've been able to slow down. Yeah. So it's like everything's just become a little bit simpler. All right. And well, because we're much shallower too. Yeah. Uh, we'll stop the ship and do a proper search around for a rock. I think these all look reasonably good to grab. There's no upslope really for them to have come from either. It's yeah. Pretty, pretty close to the top. Right. Bridge, Nav. Can we move 100 meters bearing 210? Thank you. Do we have any boxes left for rocks or are we starting to double stack? Um, it looks like we're gonna have to double stack. Okay. Yeah, we have some small ones uh, in the starboard outboard compartments so we could, we could probably go in there and be able to tell them apart quite easily. Okay. We'll get good images of them so we can be double, triple sure. Okay. Wow, what's that? Really fine bottle brush there. Do you see this? Oh, okay. Yeah. Can we just take a closer yeah. look at yeah. that? Yeah, totally. Very tall. Um, you know, we've seen bottle brush golden corals like this before. Chrysogorgia. It's unusually tall, and we've been calling them all kind of the same thing. Go for a zoom. All the polyps are closed, that's why. That's why what? Uh, it looks very... Sparse? Charlie Brownish, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Charlie <much>. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, go on. Is that what you needed there, Steve? <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, there's a toppled one. Big toppled one. Oh, well, yeah. Let's see why it toppled over. Maybe it got too big for itself. Yeah. This seems to be like the the ridge that they all like. Yeah. Yeah. They're all lined up. I think that one just got too big for its base and toppled over. This is lush here. This would also be a pretty good location to do an eDNA sample, so I, I wouldn't mind uh, maybe taking a rock from around here. Okay. We're, we're close Up enough. Yeah. Bridge, Nav. Then we can get a really solid eDNA sample while getting a rock and water for metals. Hold ship, please. Uh, we're still going to have to yeah. move on all that. Yep. So let me get in position over all this coral here. Let's let's do the rock uh, search first. Okay. Uh, um, so we're going to... Okay. We're still going to swing a little bit towards yeah, the ship. Yeah, it's going to... Yeah. So Argus is going to still move a little ways. Sure. Ship yeah. is not stopped yet. Um, so. But... It's possible that we could reacquire this ridge, okay. or we can go back. Yeah, no, nothing's magical about this spot. I just okay. noticed that you know. Oh, great. Okay. The, the the surrounding area is good for everyone's sampling needs. 
Great. That's awesome. And we can move back. We're just not as insanely deep as we were before, so the options open up. Did you drop it? Oh, yeah, you did get it. Are you cool with, should I just keep cruising along this um, sort of area with a lot of corals? Of course, yeah, this is great. Again, both species of Aridogorgia here, we got this tightly coiled one, and then the more loosely coiled Magnus Varelis. Great to see them overlapping. Really neat. See two coral species in the same kind of habitat. This might be the biggest bamboo coral I've ever seen. That's huge. Oh, wow. It's uh, right, the taller than Herc. Can we do a yeah. partial zoom on Argus? Roger that. See if I can get it. Get a good size reference there. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. There we go. It's running away from me a bit there. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just going on its own there. Going on yeah. its own? Yep. Now it's going back on its own. Interesting. Hmm. Neat. Awesome. <laughs> we do lasers off. Roger. Try that again. Okay. Some images. Yeah, I just touch off. it and it just takes off. It just goes. Wow. Okay. That's weird. Yep, there's no. Can uh, I get tether, a zoom on her? Tether zooming in or, in or out right now. Okay. I'll, uh, once we finish a shot, I'll cycle the power on it. See if that helps. <coughs> I'm going to come down on Argus just a little bit more. Full zoom. Thank you. Great. That's perfect. Very nice tight zoom. Very nice Argus shot. Good. All right. Good captures. Okay. Cool. Go wide. Come wide. That is beautiful. I'm going <coughs> to hell cycle power on the mini Zeus again. Roger see if that. that'll help. So, mini Zeus coming off. Can I? Can I start to circle rocks now? Okay, start to circle rocks. Okay, let's see. Do you want to zoom on this guy? You know everything you need to know. Uh, Yeah, while I'm looking for rocks, you can zoom there. I'm okay, not, coming back on. Not sure okay. what I'm going to pick yet. Okay. Yeah, we're. Um, if we set down here, Argus will end up right over the top of us. It'll be great. Just gravy. What about that okay. uh, there? How okay. does that look? No, it's not working at all. <laughs> it took a moment last time to oh, okay, maybe for me to give me oh, iris control. Or whatever. Okay. These might be deceptive rocks. Um, so dece deceitful. So there's my iris. I'll go for a zoom. I want to take a look at it yeah, in that's better. first okay. to see what kind of textures it has. Yeah. Huh, well, cool. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay, laser's back on when you have a chance as well. Can you give me uh, the shoulder view? Roger.
Can we do a tight zoom before we uh, pick it up as well? Sure thing. Go for zoom. Sure. Which rock are we going for? The one right in front this of us? This one, yeah. Right below the lasers. Oh, what do you think? That's greedy. <laughs> it's big. So? It is big. Big and... Connected. Oh, it is connected. Yeah, Maybe. that does Maybe. look very... Yeah. Yeah. I can poke it. Let's poke it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can break Maybe it. We might be able to break it. Not plan B is over to the right hand side there. Okay. Got some nice botryoidal textures. Good crust on it. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. I was so wrong. All right. I think we got this, our sample. Is this what we want? Yeah, you, you do we have room? Fit in the starboard box? I think we do have room. In the big box, one of the big boxes. Yep. They're, yeah. Oh, they're empty still, or they just have small rocks in them or something? Small rocks. Yeah. Oh, great. 10, well, 10, 15 centimeter rocks. Well, geez, what are we waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> Get the show on the road. Get it. Yeah. We've got the big rock the grabber. Big, yeah, we got the big one. There's no reason not to. Do an image in the front of the camera, all That's the way it. around. Okay. I'm going to tilt up for you. Am I tilt up? Oh, yeah. Go for it. Um, here, can you go that's, wide? I can get us out of the silt. I think it's about to clear. Okay. Yeah. Great. Oh, we've All got right. a stowaway here. Yep, brittle star on the underside. Make a note of that in the sampling sheet. Oh, and a little, like, two polyp coral on the left-hand side there. Oh, yeah. Tiny, tiny little tiny, guy. Tiny. All right, okay. I think we're ready to stow. Great, go fine. Give me hey, the shoulder. Yep, I'll follow you around. And, and let's see. When you're ready, I'll give you the salvo. Great. I gotta open the drawer. Pull tray out. Okay. And whenever you're ready, I can flip over. You wanna give me the other camera too? Yeah, I'll give you this, the uh, salvo. Uh, yeah. What that? And the other, I probably don't need it. Um, which okay, one's that? which? Let's go in E. For okay. The forward partition. Oh, hold on. I'm giving you totally the wrong camera. E is the forward big one. Yep. There you go. Sorry about that. Okay, we're going to need to do a little pushing it around here. Do a sediment zoom while we're here. The nice thing is that there's no, there's not a lot of biology other than what's encrusted on the rock in the starboard box. Um, just rocks, from what I can tell, but can do anything to get it to seal properly, that's ideal. There we go. That'll work. I'll, uh, I'll try it first and then I'll see if we need yep, to bump it Yep, go for it. You can try Apple it. Tree in.
That looks good. Those are up. Great. Okay, dive salvo. And we'll yep. do a do corresponding Niskin here as well. Uh, what do we have open for Niskin? Number one. Bubble. <laughs> it doesn't like the super bright, right? No, it does not. The change. That's okay. I got a, a less cranky camera here. Okay, Steve, can you give me Iris for sure, the... Sure, sorry. Yeah, great. Okay, and one is the red one on top? Uh, yep, one is the yep. top one, yeah. Okay. Josh, can you switch that camera back to the Niskins? Yes. Sure. Thanks. Huh. Way in the back. Jeez Louise. Nice. Yep, up, up. Yep. That's it. Oh, come on. Good job. All right, and then the last thing is, uh, before you put the arm away, can you just see how uh, Thick the sediment is here. Just kind of yeah, a poke. totally. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can zoom. Great. That'd be awesome. And. Uh, Huh. Okay, there's the rock. So, a couple inches? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Looks like pretty variable. Yeah. A couple inches? All right, good. Good to know. Um, we'll keep a lookout. We may do that again in another place. Okay, uh, We're looking Go to video. see if any of the sediment up here might be corable, of corable depth, but it's, uh, yeah, tough. Tough to tell because we're still on a giant volcano. But we'll keep an eye out. If we see any very large sediment patches, we might do that again. W in Auto XY.
not sure that I've ever seen a USBL track follow so perfectly. I know, it's USBL amazing. Track, like, it's is, really nice. That is bonkers. <laughs> so beautiful. Like there's not even a there's not even a point cloud with it's the USBL. Like it's just stunning. There, that's where you are. <laughs> yeah, we turned the DVL off for a dive. I mean, there was could, a, a like ground right on it, now. and didn't we? Yeah, we, we like just, just didn't run it. Flew by USBL. Yeah, that was awesome. That's fine. Um, okay, science. What do you want to do next? Let's just keep tracking towards uh, the summit waypoint eleven, and we'll just kind of run, keep running through it uh, and see what we see. Okay. Do you want to reach the top of the summit? And you can probably see high pack, and then head over to eleven, um, or kind of skirt around. Do you have any preference? Yeah, we'll, we'll skirt around. Let's go across and just keep continuing our transect first, and then we'll decide if we want to do you know, come back uh, the other direction and do kind of mow, lawn mowing. Um, okay, so by I think I heard both answers there. Do you want to continue up and over? Yeah, um, we're gonna okay. go straight through it first. Okay, and then head over. And then we'll head over, yeah. Roger. Bridge, now. We're ready to get underway again. Can you move 100 meters bearing 210? That's it, thank you. This would be a nice place to try to zoom on some of this, these sw swimming things in the column. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. for it. Sure. This is kind of like easy. Do you want me to look up at the blue more or? I don't know. It's so hard to get an image. Yeah. I don't know. I can't tell <laughs> what's going on there is the snow falling up <laughs> no that doesn't seem reasonable or is it just something the way we're, that we're moving okay, oh it could be just our washer it could be just yeah. our influence on on it We're still a two one zero. Roger. So video, Steve, we've had a couple of questions um, about kind of your role on the ship and wondering, you know, how you know when to zoom and how the communication works between you and our ROV pilots. So do you kind of want to explain how that works? Yeah, sure. Uh, First, my role on the ship is primarily to operate the cameras that are mounted on the ROVs. Um, so what you see in channel one, channel two at home, and dozens of other cameras on, on the ROV and the ship I can switch to and send to different monitors and transmit out to shore. Um, and then the process for when to zoom is I, I typically wait for a command from the Hercules pilot um, to because we zoom from the camera we call Herc Zeus, the main camera on Hercules. Um, and that's just be the reason I wait for a command is because um, the camera is not only for imaging, but also for flying. And we, I need to make sure that I'm giving the pilot a uh, full field of view when they need it and not disorienting them by zooming, which can sometimes look like the vehicle is taking off in one direction. Um, yeah, so we try to work in that typical fashion. And uh, oh, I am 
the Hercules pilot often decides to give me the command based on what the science scientists in the back row want to look at. A lot of teamwork. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Steve is also the repository of knowledge on how to take beautiful imagery of wildlife. So we use them for that too. It's always fun. Every pilot has their own style of communication and of flying. So luckily Gabby and I have been flying for a few weeks together. Um, but it's always interesting to fly with somebody new and uh, kind of relearn everything and you know figure out how each other works. Hmm. That's fun. Wow, that is a bright red. I know, it's amazing. Nice. And the purple, so good. Oh yeah, that that one, that bamboo is covered with zoanthids completely. Oh, the one right ahead yeah, of us there. Looks fuzzier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's got a dead base. Yep, and then the the right hand side of the colony is zoanthid, and the left hand side is all live. Actually, it might not be bamboo coral. It might be uh, from noid. Oh, and another coral is the bamboo. Yeah, can we take a just a half zoom? Yeah, I'm gonna try and get you like. Oh, do you think the actual, the pink flesh on the left-hand side is actually part of it? Yeah, that, I think that's the original colony. Okay. And the right-hand side is the zoom? new stuff, the invader. So interesting that they would, I mean, I don't choose is the right word, but, you know, they're only on one stock. And yeah. And they haven't gone over the other one yet, or maybe they're making their way over. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Huh. That's yeah, interesting. Bamboo. It's so yeah. divisive. It's can you come down a bit? With yeah, Argus? Sure. I know I'm, I'm below you on the slope there. Yeah, I think I'm just starting to move now. Okay. Uh, Steve, did you get what you wanted here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. It's a very unique sparse branching bamboo colony, though, in the background. Okay. Go. The one, one that looks like, a, I don't know, a smiley face or a... Yeah, like a trident. Yeah. A trident one. <laughs> Come on, smiley face. I see the smiley face. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, maybe like a Picasso smiley face. Yeah, right? like, yes, exactly. With the, the nose coming off the Very side of the Picasso. face. Very Picasso. Very cubist. Some swinging brittle stars there. Yeah. Go for zoom. The important part here is the branch, right? Right. Branching portion. Yeah. You can go a little further in, I think. Thereabouts. It's unusual that yeah, these are all, they branch at the same place um, twice. So it has branches coming off in three different directions. Super long intertentacular sclerites. That one's for Rennie there. Tentacular sclerites, hey? Intertentacular sclerites. Oh, yeah. intertentacular, Roger. It's a Beastie Boy song. <laughs> 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 Where is he? <laughs> he's oh, in the building. Where did he come he's from? In your, he's in your head. Basically. Oh, wow. <laughs> Go wild. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of what that felt like. <laughs> the disembodied voice. Yeah. But in, what is it? Intersclotector? So the, and some of the bamboo corals, they have tentacles that come out like large spines or spears between the tentacles and so those have been named by taxonomist intertentacular so between the tentacles and then sclerites yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i got the bc by song in my head <laughs> you can sing it it's okay
Oh, this is a cool uh, bamboo. Yeah, it is cool because it's part buried by the sediment. Or that's what it looks like. It's toppled, but it's like made another run at life. Yeah. It like changed its direction of growth. Yeah, it is very unusual. That's super cool. It's almost like it landed on another rock and it just like it it's, yeah. saved it. Got lucky. It's really neat. You can definitely tell how big it was when it fell and then where it started to change direction. It's like a 90, 90 degree almost. Go for zoom. Yeah, you, you can tell here this is um, this terrain isn't the best for large corals. Even though the rocks here have probably been here for a while, they're not you know tumbling down slopes and things. Uh, they they definitely don't support the weight of large corals, especially if you have a very strong you know, current or something that might result in toppling them over. Yeah, uh, it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Falls over. Go wide. And it, supported so it wants to grow up into the flow so it kind of we're going to call that one a rake yeah it looks exactly like <laughs> a rake. yeah but uh it probably belongs to the clade i4 oh uh, bamboo not the corals. rake clade yeah. at all but it, it does look like a rake yeah. somebody's leaving the, the the yard work uh tools out and again We have about an hour and a half left of bottom time. Is that correct? Yeah, I think yeah. we're off bottom at uh, 1,600, was it? No, 1,800. 1,500? 4 o'clock, Science, Steve, I've asked you this before, but we've got some listeners who are curious about the manganese nodules that we have been seeing across this dive. And can you explain again how they're formed? And I'm going to try and learn to do this description by the end of this cruise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the nodules, typically we find nodules on, on seamounts. They're very small, um, but they typically will be present in softer sediment uh, substrate environments. Um, this is because uh, the nodule, the way it forms, is you know, there's some sort of nucleus, you know, a grain of sand or you know, a small rock or something uh, that serves as a Zoom? Dep uh, uh, a surface for these iron manganese oxides uh, to precipitate upon. And so over time, in the right spot, if you have a good current flow that keeps sediment from uh, smothering okay, the nodule, you get um, layers of these polymetallic crusts that accumulate over millions of years. And the crusts uh, accrete or, or uh, rather precipitate over time, layers build up and they get bigger and bigger. Um, typically, these you find nodules, very extensive nodule fields in areas that are relatively stable. There's not a lot of um, disturbance that might you know, smother them in sediment, uh, high currents that can take away and infect the sediment away. Um, but it all comes from the water uh, that passes over the nodule fields. There's a couple of other there's a couple of other ways that nodules can form, but my biologist brain is not <laughs> not not there yet. Um, I recall Beth last cruise was talking about some other ways that nodules can form, uh, but generally that's how they form in most places. 
Thanks, Steve. That's great. Maybe this might be a spot to set down and see if we can push the okay. fingers into the sediment, see how deep it goes. Uh, ship is still on move. I can bring it to a stop. Um, do we, think do, we, we could do a two? quick poke, probably. Say we again? Could, we could do a quick poke. And poke All right. and then. Yeah, I, we can always stop and come back if uh, and we have a lot of time uh, for that push core if, if it's needed. But a survey, it's even worth to stop at this point. I gotta get used to this chair thing. It's too much fussing. Thank you. Not very deep. Yeah, kind of a couple inches still. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that was that was a good place as any because uh, it's the most substantial pile we've seen. Yep, it's still the same. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, onward. Um, but we, uh, let's see. We did sample some nodules on the last cruise. I wish I still had them, because uh, I could kind of show you a little bit more about how they looked, but they're on a pallet right now, all <laughs> packed away. So not going to be able to do that. But maybe we'll see if we can sample some on some of these seamounts. I'm going to move us up off this high point in the same direction we've been going. Um, it's going to start going a little bit downhill. Um, right. And then we'll have to think about how we want to rearrange and skirt around the bridge. But okay. it'll just be a 50 meter move. Sounds good. Bridge, Nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing two one zero? Thank you. Oh yeah, that's a uh a really interesting um, anthemastus. Uh, we just passed off to the left-hand side. If, oh. Uh, if, if you have the ability. Yeah, I should. Just to peek oh, that way. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I looked right by that. Yeah. This would be a really interesting observation. Um, if, if we could get some imagery of this, at least, there is a species that looks very much like this um, from much further south. Uh, called Anthemastus tahinotis, uh, that looks really identical to this. Uh, it has a very long um, kind of base and then okay, uh, go for zoom. knob of tentacles. Polyps. But this is this might be that, uh, but it would I think be a very 
far north observation of it, but still noteworthy nonetheless. Very flexible. Yep. Great, great shot. What did you say the name you, of this was that you thought? It, okay, go ahead. It wide. looks very similar to Anthemastus tahinotis, um, which we've seen quite a bit at the remote Pacific Islands. Uh, so let me see if I can pull up an image here. Kat, do you think, are you able to communicate with the bridge that they got a hot mic going? Or we're not able to do Yeah, that? I think they do have the hot mic on Yeah, right now. but I guess we can't, they're walking on us so we can't contact them. So bridge, Nav. Uh, your mic is on and we're hearing everything on the bridge. Your mic is on. Thank you. Still on. <laughs> Still on. Sure, yeah. So we take this around to the, you take this to the end of the move and then we'll move over to waypoint 11 or what's, the, what's after this? I think that's the plan. Steve, do you have any input on that? Yeah, um, keep, yeah, keep going over. And then when we start, when it starts to drop off really quickly, well, what I would like to do is kind of do passes. Um, so follow follow through until it goes down a little bit more, and then kind of head north, uh, maybe a length or so, uh, okay. a boat length, and then kind of mow the lawn in the opposite direction across the summit. Kind of get what I'm after. Um. Yeah. So finish the move. So we come down, kind of over this knoll, then move north. Yep. And then you kind of want to mow this way. Or even just you, we can go. What you you can tell me whichever way is better for the ship to move, but I was you know thinking you know along parallel to the path we came in on. Oh. Or do you like? Yeah, uh, that's fine. So, okay, I'm still a little bit confused. So, so move parallel to the path we came on, but right. to um, I guess this would be on the north side of it. Yep. Roger. All right. Yeah, let's try and do that for one length and see what it looks like. Um, kind of facing Kirk upslope okay. uh, as much as possible. All right, sounds and, good. And if, if, the, if we don't see a lot of anything or if it's pretty sparse, um, we'll see how much time we have. Maybe we can drop down and come up a, a different side. Roger. Um, so we'll finish this move um, and then move bearing 360 okay. for about, uh, actually maybe Bearing three four zero, um, and then we'll face Herc upslope, and we'll run parallel to the route we just did. So it will be the reciprocal of two one zero. Yeah, if you want to step to <clears throat> that, what were you saying? Three four zero. I think your first move. Yeah. You may want to start that now. Like I would stop the ship for a second, and then make that move, and then by the time we swing, and then swing over. Okay. We'll be, because if we keep going south, then we're just going to. Then just keep going. We're going to keep pulling the ROVs south. All right. Um, I'm going to make it at three, yeah, three, three, zero. Do you think it's better just to give them the total change, or do you want to stop them first, or is that going to cause? Oh, I see. Stop, wait to settle out, and then make the move. You could. You could stop now and wait till we swing a bit. Yeah. Or, or you could, I mean, it's two options. It depends how the ship's going to behave. Like, if you think they can just manage that. Mm, let's stop, settle out, and then make the move. Okay. Yeah, there's plenty to see here. Yeah. You want to do that? Bridge, Nav. Yeah, there's something floating in the water column. If Steve, you want to get a shot of that. Oh, okay. no. It's actually a coral. Yeah, it's, a, can it's we one of the hold station, please? go dog, go trees. <laughs> 
Okay, go for Thank zoom. Thank you. Yeah, these look like sheet flows here, so I doubt we're going to have any coral sediment. That's Just pretty pockets cool. of sediment. Yep, metallogorgia. I love these. These are the smallest polyps we see, I think. <clears throat> cool shot. Are they retracted or just tiny? They're just tiny. Oh yeah, I can see yeah. them now. Huh. Some of them are are contracted and retracted. They have uh, maybe those okay, particular polyps might have eaten something recently. Soft coral up high. Cool. I feel like I usually see those on rocks, not up in the not up in the trees. What's the diameter of this kind of summit area? Uh, Ooh, okay. um, so that is 58 meters. Yeah, okay, not huge. No, and then the other direction is 95 meters. Bathypathies. Bathypathies is the uh, yeah. black coral? Right, yeah. Orange tissue, black coral. It's like yellow ochre. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Happy little black coral. We got a big one up here. Yeah, there, there's some patches here, you know, where you have boulders, you get some pretty vibrant communities arise. These metallogorgia are all over the place. They don't need much. Maybe a small cobble. Go ahead with the zoom. Thanks. Oh, look at those little guys in there. The shrimp? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're there. <laughs> it's a bunch of different corals all like living here together. Okay, go wide. Okay. That was moving a little fast. I just need to dial my Z bias better. I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. Seen very many fish this time. It's yeah, we've seen a couple ones scatter out of the way, but um, at least in this final few hours, we've been on the surface, on the top of the seamount, hardly any. 